Great. Good. So uh, we're, we're 11 minutes past. Um, I'm sure more people will join as we go on, but welcome to those who've already joined. Um, give you a little bit of a background. Um, this session is going to be moderated um, by myself, Mike Lochran. Hello, everyone. And uh, my colleague, uh, Mick Mancuso. We're, we're both from Rockwell, and uh, you'll see our, our faces, our smiling faces up on the slide deck. And we're also being joined by Omar Abosh um, from Microsoft. Um, but this is a round table, so really we're looking for everyone's input on this. Um, to, to kind of kick us off, the, the round table is, is Build Exponential IT. And it's really a chance for us to discuss the different ways and different impacts that we're seeing um, the digital transformation uh, projects moving out, but but linking the IT, the OT, and, and engaging all p people within um, that that um, that journey, if one of a better word. Um, as part of that, we do want to have um, a, a little bit of thought leadership from people. We're going to ask for that. We're going to ask for your questions. We're also going to do a poll just to kind of kick things off very shortly. But again, just to encourage everyone, if you would like to ask a question, or you've got a thought, or you want to make a comment. Um, please put on your camera or, or, or shout up. If you want to put a comment in the chat box and say, hey, I'd like, I've got a thought on that, please do. If um, if you've got your camera open and you're happy for it, I, I may I may put out there and say, look, has anyone got any thoughts on this? And, and, and someone's already kindly said that they're not shy today, so that's great. So the more we kind of ask, the more we get out of it, I believe, and, and, and it makes it a, a much more freewheeling system. So I think to kick this off, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick poll just to see where people are. So Aileen, could you put the uh, the poll up for um, the attendees, please, to, to fill out? The poll is out under poll. Fantastic. Excellent. So everyone has to complete the poll to uh, to get it done, including the, the moderators. So please feel free to put your uh, best answer in there. So which of the below is the single biggest challenge in your company's digital transformation journey? And you can see the poll results coming up there. Give up on a couple of seconds on that. Wow, I think um, creating a digital first culture and getting by and it's, 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 it's oh, it's soon getting surpassed. Great. I think we should have most of the votes in there. Yeah, so creating a digital first culture and getting buying at every level um, of the company seems to be taking the lead on that, which which crack, which actually doesn't surprise me. Um, just to get a kind of bit of a, an insight into um, how that might affect people, I'm going to pass you over to Mick uh, Mancuso. Mick, I thought it might be good to kick off. What was your experience? Because at Rockwell Automation, clearly, we've gone our own digital transformation journey as a, as a manufacturer and technology provider. But Mick, Mick you've got first-hand experience in that. Would, would you like to share with the round table um, some of your thoughts on that and, and what you think about the 50% the of people talking about the, the digital first culture? Yeah, yeah, no, I'd love to, Mike. Thank you. So hi, everyone again. Uh, Mick Mancuso from, from Rockwell, and, and I helped lead our digital transformation within our manufacturing operations. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I think about when I think about that digital first culture, I think for us, what really helped us get the buy-in is that we had a digital plan that was focused on achieving the same business results that we've always had, right? So if I think of our priorities within manufacturing, it's safety, it's quality, it's service, and then it's cost. And how do we um, continually try to improve or transform in some cases where those are? So I think for us, you know, we didn't create sort of new metrics. We didn't create sort of new business objectives or um, sort of new, new, um, and initiatives or anything like that. It was really all around the support of how do we continue to do those priorities better? And so when we think about digital first, digital was just another way to go help those initiatives. And the other thing I, I think is, you know, we had a very, very um, robust continuous improvement organization. So I think, you know, we had people always searching for how do we get better at quality and people always searching for how do we get more productivity. And so when we put these digital tools in their hands and unlock new potential, uh, I think it really helped us drive forward. 
where we needed to go. So it wasn't so much that we were trying to necessarily change the culture, but what we were doing is giving these people tools, uh, digital tools that really helped them take the culture we had to the next level. And, and then Omar, just throwing that open to you as well. Um, clearly a technology um, provider, but, but also a digital leader in your own right. What, what's been Microsoft's kind of experience around that cultural side of things? Um, well, um, firstly, good morning, good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, pleasure to be with you. Omar uh, Abosh, responsible for services at Microsoft globally. Um, if you look at the journey Microsoft's been on, say, compared to six years ago, it's been dramatic. I mean, I think most people on the call here will remember Microsoft uh, in the early 2000s as uh, the company that was viewed as quasi-monopolistic, in trouble with the antitrust authorities, and, and missing on major shifts uh, in technology like mobile or even cloud. Uh, and then, you know, six years ago, Satya Nadella came in as the new boss uh, and has fundamentally pivoted the company in a huge way. And digital culture uh, is, is at the heart of it, although we don't talk about it internally as digital culture. We talk about things like speed uh, and agility and innovation uh, and shifting from a know-it-all culture to a learn-it-all culture. Uh, this idea that no one of us you know, knows everything, it's impossible. Uh, and that actually the best way we can serve our business is to acknowledge that we've got tons to learn. And there's an incredible pressure inside the business for each of us to develop ourselves as well as the teams around us uh, in terms of learning in order so that we can go fast as a company. Because digital, for me at least, more than anything else, it's about being able to move at speed. So, yeah, it's a common approach there, the business outcome, the people led, um, the, the move at speed. Again, opening up to the, to the kind of the, 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 the attendees, what, what, what I'd like to know what your experience is. Um, clearly, culture has been pointed out there. Does anybody want to share some thoughts on that? Can I? Please. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't really prepare this. Um, but uh, I've seen this digital transformation uh, going on for for already for a long time, for, for decades. Uh, if you think about uh, music, the audio cassettes going to compact disc and then to USB sticks and, and, and to hard disks and, and moving on like that. Uh, I, I think it's mostly of always about the user and the trend that I've seen lately as this trend has also entered the enterprises by moving everything to the cloud. Um, I'm a product manager, so I can see both sides uh, of the coin. Uh, I can see the good things and the bad things. Uh, companies want to make money and they want to save cost. And with digital transformation, they can do that. But it brings also a lot of advantages. Having everything in the cloud, uh, of course, it has to be secure and all that. We can see the advantages at this moment in the crisis. Everybody's working from home. If we hadn't had that revolution in the past years from moving to the clouds, it would be basically be impossible. We would still have to go to the office at this moment. Um, so there are obviously a lot of advantages. Um, it's just how to how you put them in proportion. In, in uh, you have to, I mean, paint the story around it, and then you can convince other people of of the good things of, of digital transformation, and it's going much further now. Uh, I'm now working in, in, because to be honest, I believe, and, and maybe everybody knows already, but I found that every 10 years I had to change technology because niche technology becomes commodity. Uh, and then it's mainstream. And uh, I, so in the past I had every 10 years I had to change. And now I'm, I'm doing digital transformation on accounting. I don't really know about accounting, but uh, I'm able as a product manager to manage that because I know the digital transformation and I can see how it's progressing. Um, and, and it's very complex. So on top of that, I feel we will need something like artificial intelligence helping that digital transformation. And not... Am I talking to myself? Yeah, you are. You are. No, 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 no. no continue no, on, Rick. No. Continue on. Okay. Um, uh, what I want to say: this artificial intelligence can can bring a lot there, uh, especially if 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 it goes into much more complex terrains. 
Um, and that was the reason why I was so interested in this day, but all the all the meetings are at the same time, so it's the, it was difficult to choose. <laughs> yeah, that was my my input, let's say. Uh, no, thank thank you very much, Rick. Th thanks for adding that. Um, and I think it goes to show, doesn't it, the the, the different levels and complexities around it, and it means different things to different people. But again, it comes down to the the, the adoption of it and people's um, embracing of what what can be possible. Um, Eric, have you got any thoughts? Yeah, I, um, I give a five for the contest for the award on digital transformation. Uh, so I expect that we will be uh, in the shortlist tonight. But um, um, but for, for me, I, I manage that in different type of organization, in big groups like Orange Group or in smaller organization like Thales today, which is quite a, a big brand, a big name for train, but not a so big company. Uh, uh, and I, and it's for me, there is a big difference between digitalize your company and transform your company to a digital company. Uh, it's, it's what Mike makes say at the beginning. We we can go to digitalization and improve efficiency, improve business revenues, customer experience, uh, cost cost, and things like that. But your company remain a little bit the same, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more customer centric, a little bit more but still the same company, I would say a, a railway uh, organization. If you want to migrate to a digital uh, company, it's, it's a long journey. It's, not, it's a little bit what Omar said on Microsoft. It doesn't happen like that. You can digitalize your infrastructure, but change the full culture of a company, it takes more time. Um, but you have to start somewhere. And in Thales, I we decide, and it was a I would say the, the motto of the five that we give to, to, the, to the award is that how to do digital transformation without a digital transformation program. <laughs> because I, I experiment that in, in Orange, big organization um, need to structure, structure to have a program. So we, you get consultants, you get a lot of people around that. And at the end, you have too, you have too many people to really decide. And, uh, and and if you want to change the culture and say what digital is, there is a matter of speed in digital. Speed matters. And if you start your program with something we take years to define what will be the program, it's not digital at all. So in Thales, I, um, I, um, I experiment another way. I, um, we decided in IT to, to have, a, I would say, strong um, basis in terms of the architecture, uh, in terms technical solution, we decide to consolidate uh, suppliers, uh, not to have too much technology, even if it's not the perfect one, uh, we, we decide to focus on limited number of technology. For example, integration, we decide to have MuSoft only and not several integration tools. Not because MuSoft is the best to manage all, but because we are small and we are able to well manage one uh, uh, solution. Um, and, uh, and in 13 months, we digitalized more or less all processing in our organization, except finance was already on Microsoft Dynamics, so a little bit digital already. Uh, um, but um, we really changed the way we are developing applications, the way we are managing the IT, the way we manage security and things like that, without growing in terms of number of people, being able to face the COVID uh, situation. Uh, you can imagine it's like an airline for Thales, uh, there is no trade, more or less. We lose, we lose more than 90% of our revenue. Um, so it's close to zero today. So we decrease IT by two in number of people, but we continue to operate well because we did those decisions to be flexible, agile, and not to focus on too much things at the same time. But in, in three years, it, it was really possible to manage a full transformation journey, more or less, for the company without having this heavy program uh, uh, strong rules in IT, uh, be consistent over, I would say, quarters in terms of decision, and be close to business, of course. Huh? Uh, that's what's really important. So our IT is it, part of the people coming from the business, so they know very well the business processes. It helps to, 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 to go fast. But at that time, we have digitalized Thales, but we are not yet a digital company. It's, it's, it's another journey for me. It's It's... Yeah, it, it, I kind of 
another another kind of thing I'd, I'd, yeah, but obviously we've got a very strong CIO audience um, on, on this kind of um, on this meeting and do, do we feel that this is a that that this digitalization this digital journey um, transformation should be led by IT or are they just an enabler what what's what's the thoughts on that and if anybody wants to come on and share please if you, if you go on and press the red button and uh, should, um, should be led by someone who is um, who has the full confidence of the CEO, whatever the guy is in marketing, in IT, in HR, for me, it could be an HR role, but today HR is sometimes far from digital, but, but digital transformation is, is changing the organization, changing the competencies, changing the processes, so there's accountability in, in the organization. So it could be led by a, a bright uh, uh, HR guy, for example. But, um, but of course, you have to understand technology. So it's very often between, I would say, marketing and IT because these are the people closest to technology. But for me, it's not a, it's a mission, it's not a role. And, and, and just kind of, Mick, Omar, I don't know what thoughts you've got on that. And I know certainly from, from my experience, it does seem to be led in different ways. But yeah, have I'm, you got I'm, any best practice for success? Yeah, Mike, I am. I, I'm so boring. I actually co-authored a book on the whole topic. It's called Pivot to the Future, and it's all about how companies don't have to die from disruption, uh, and it's all about innovation at speed. But and I mean, what I can tell you is what we wrote in the book is that in the future, if you believe that technology is as big a deal as I think it is, every company needs to be good at technology, irrespective of whether you're an insurer, a bank, a retailer, an airlines component manufacturer. You know, whatever it is, you do, you have to be good at technology. And, and then being good at technology isn't about outsourcing all the thinking. It isn't about offshoring all the capability. I mean, it's about people inside the business who are more than contract managers, people with a deep instinct into how that technology can help their business. But as I said, with the learn it all thing, no, no one person, no one company can know everything that needs to know. So partnership, working with startups, working with a broader ecosystem, those become critical elements. Now, in terms of leadership of that, well, of course, we've got to come from the top. And actually, the book is very clear. <laughs> if the CEO themselves are not leading the change, it's going to fail. I mean, you could do a little project here and there, but a genuine digital transformation of the company where, you know, all my processes are written in the modern era and developing new revenue and new business models using digital technology, I mean, that comes from the top of the C-suite to make that happen. And so IT play a critical role. I think more than an enabler, because if, if, if you buy my logic that says every company's got to be good at technology, that means their IT professionals need to be really good at technology. Um, but it's but but you don't do the technology for IT's sake. You do the technology for the sake of the business objectives. And so therefore, obviously, it's a business way by definition. Yeah, I, I was thinking along those same same lines as, a, as uh, I was listening to Eric talk. You know, when you talk about who leads it, it's exactly what I think Omar is saying is it needs to be led by the top. It needs to be led by the CEO that needs to be infused throughout the uh, entire organization. It needs to be supported by the board as well. So um, I think that's where you start to see it. Now, who gets, you know, specific pieces of that? Um, you know, that's what gets divvied up um, throughout the organization. But definitely, if you want to have that transformational change and even some of the things that Rick was talking about, kind of macro level on how do we digitize um, that leadership really needs to come for the for the head of the entire organization. And you know that the whole the whole leadership buying is is absolutely key to that. To, so to kind of taking that a little bit further, I, I I you know we're all experiencing probably pilots and failure of pilot schemes or pilots not going to scale. Is that one of the reasons why? Again, open it up and welcome Francois. I'll just put on your, uh, you. your video. Would you? I don't know whether you want to jump in on that or. or. Yeah, uh, there was a question about how to place uh, if digitalization belongs into an IT organization and where the CIO is taking the lead. And uh, my and my company, I, I think this is a joint effort, and, and that's why you need also senior management as a team, uh, executive committees taking a joint decision. That yes, uh, some of those decisions can be and pilot and this is just to mitigate the risks of a change because it's not about the platform or the technology only it's how you uh, connect it clever uh, the integration to other tools uh, also the agility uh, 
uh, because you see companies changing, popping up, disappearing, small caps even uh, with uh, brilliant uh, ideas uh, growing very fast. Uh, you need to be able as an industry to respond on who is now the best player and who is the, the change maker. Who is the one ahead of the others and dare to take some risk, calculate it, because at the end your management will come back and say, okay, what's my return on investment? I'm spending a lot of money and I agree with uh, Eric and say, okay, the journey starts today, but you need to be clever to slice it in and, and pieces so that the return quick wins are there to gain trust, to gain a bigger portion of the budget to digitalize for and, and your company. And that's where we change and become a, a game changer as well. If you say it's not purely one function and that's easily manageable with a number of people believe in it and okay, you, you manage at sub levels your budget. The true uh, value of a digital uh, transformation is in my opinion where different departments can share each other's benefits that one plus one is not two but becomes three because you see the efficiency gain of digital processes so you also will have to change your organization it's not along with people only making the difference but uh, see that the digital asset uh, is there to make you uh, growing to make you being more performant as a company and that's why I don't think it's a CIO or a CFO or, uh, in my case, commercial uh, organization. Uh, I think it's uh, all joint. You need to believe and you need to take the risks and the certain steps. And then, OK, when you say, OK, this time to leverage when you have uh, gone through, let's say, the, the learning curve to see the, the, the bigger picture uh, to go yeah, for the next steps. That's my opinion. But... Oh, thank you yeah, very Fran much, Francois. Francois, that, that, that's really good. You know, I, you know I, I hate the word pilot. You know, because I think in, in, inherently a pilot is you're trying to get something to fail, right? You're seeing if it's going to pass or fail. And if you're really talking about digital transformation, you're going to commit to digital transformation. It's not going to be done with pilots. And that's why I think you get companies that are that are kind of stuck. And in, in I think one of the things we said in the, the, the write up here around pilot purgatory or things like that, it's really about how do you kick off your digital transformation the right way? And I think it's those things that Francois was talking about. Right? How do you get the right team? How do you get the right commitments? How do you get buy in across the organization? And instead of having a pilot that's that's considered a pass fail, you know, you have to look at it in terms of like a first use and how do we put in the right effort and resources to make sure this thing is successful and, and teach the organization along the way. Um, the other reason I think they fail is they're not part of that bigger plan. Again, they're, they're thought of as a pass fail exercise and not, you know, and if we pass, then we'll figure out what the plan is. And again, I like looking at things strategically. I look at things in terms of let's put together the right plan and where we're going to go see the business value and how we're going to execute to get this business value. And a pilot's not helping you do that. Again, a pilot's turned into this kind of pass fail exercise. And so if you fail, is your digital transformation over? And is that really the right thing strategically for you as a company? So, um, you know, my thoughts on pilot, pilots and that, I mean, that, that's kind of what I share. But quite honestly, I just, I hate the idea of it. I hate the thought of it. I hate the word because uh, I think it takes us away from really what our, our, our objective is. No, I, I would agree, Mick. Yeah. Sorry, go on, Francois. No, I agree, uh, Mick. Uh, I think um, if you look digitalization, you could compare maybe like innovation. Uh, you need to have several uh, rounds, iterations uh, before you can uh, grow and, and, and learn from it. Um, some people will call it a pilot. Uh, I see then either a first step to 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 step in and and prove the value of, out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think again where, where where I've seen success has been where there's been the collaboration between the different parts of the business um, around the pilots and, and the broader picture. Where I've seen failure is where each of the part of the organisation has kept to its silos and done its own pilots that don't join up to each other. And certainly, you know, Eric and, and Francois, you were both saying that that whole piece around the collaboration is absolutely core and the culture throughout the company. Otherwise, you just have these pilot purgatories going back to what Mick was saying there. So, yeah, that's um, there's some common approaches coming on here, which is great. Um, it, it, it's more than collaboration. I think if you really want to transform your company, you need trust. Uh, you need trust 
And for me, you can build that with two big elements. One is collaboration. Of course, you have to work together and not once against the other or one in a silo mode, but also to have respect. Um, I think one of the challenges that we had um, when I joined John Talis three years ago, more or less, uh, it was that the application domain was fully managed by the business. So train operation managed their, their train operation solution and things like that. Um, uh, so the respect that we had to get is that for all technology decision, including partner technology, is the job of IT. As a final decision with BIT, doesn't mean that we will decide alone, but it was, it was important for me to, to say, uh, you will not choose Microsoft or, uh, or Salesforce or whatever. At the end, the, the tools and the technology will be the decision of IT. Of course, if we have a common view and common decision, it's, it's a perfect uh, fit. But, uh, and and the, what you need is the decision of the business. It's not the IT that has to say to the business what they need, um, because it was a little bit like that uh, when I arrived. So that doesn't mean that we cannot co-create, that we cannot collaborate, things like that, but should be clear with as the accountability of what at the end. Um, and, um, and for us, it was um, the way to, 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 to start to build trust is that collaborate, but also have a clear uh, um, respect of the, uh, we say, accountability of each actor of the transformation. There's uh, just, just, just kind of quickly that there's, um, Philippe has, has made a, a comment in the chat. And I wondered, I wondered if it might be worth opening up and just, just having a bit of a discussion around this. And it touches on the biggest challenge is to build the concrete business case and the KPIs to track progress. Thoughts? Because we talked about return investment, we, we talked about pilot purgatory. How, how difficult or how easy have people found that? I mean, I'll make a couple of comments on this. I mean, generally speaking, so for example, if you want to make a business case for something like an agile factory, actually, when you look at things like safety, emissions, you know, OPEX reduction, throughput improvement, re reduction of unplanned downtime, asset utilization, all of that, you can make a business case. You know, at that level, you can make a business case. But that's quite a big undertaking, like to go and make, you know, an agile factory and scale that across the group. It's typically not how people approach it. People tend to decompose it into little pieces. And somewhere along the line, uh, there'll be investment items uh, that get into things like, okay, we need we have like 100 versions of, you know, 100 ERP instances that we need to consolidate. And we need to get a single view of the truth of our data. And how do we create a data platform that is extracting data, let's say from upstream, whether it's agriculture or raw materials, into manufacturing, into the supply chain, and then down with consumers. Making the case for that data fabric is hard. It's a bit like if you remember back in the 1990s, making the business case for something like middleware. It's like, it's like we don't even need it, but it's very hard to justify it because like what exactly, you know, what revenues does that drive? So companies get tangled up with that kind of a thing right? because they, they lose sight of the use cases and what the building blocks are to help you achieve the use case. And data fabric in a cloud world is the kind of thing that, pe that people come unstuck on. So I always try and encourage people to start with like, what's the big business outcome I'm trying to achieve? What are the use cases I'm going to solve? And then let's understand what are all the components of that that have to come together to, to make the business case overall. Um, you know, the like the McKinsey and Deloitte don't have a problem creating business cases for customers. Um, getting that business case converted into people's budgets where the budget might, you know, might be a cost increase in IT and, you know, and therefore a blowing of the budget, but might be a cost decrease in somewhere in core operations and reduction of budget. It's that alignment across the silos that's problematic, which again goes back to why I said earlier, you need to be operating at the C level Otherwise, no one can solve these issues, you know, locally, uh, in order to get to the bottom of these things. Oh, hi, Dirk. Hey. Uh, would you, that, would you, do you have a comment, Dirk? Would you jump in? Yeah, just commenting on the business case. I think uh, where we have some experience with is that we kind of made a, a kind of holistic business case, uh, looking at the bigger picture. And that is supported by different separate use cases, uh, different separate separate uh, uh, flows, use cases, scenarios. And as we as these cases mature, 
we revisit the business case every time we, we implement and we deploy, we every time revisit this holistic business case. Um, because it's it's a lot more, and I agree on who takes the lead and who takes who is the owner. I think it's a shared objective, a shared vision of business and technical people to to go towards a, a digital transformation. But there's much more than tooling. It's also about reviewing the process uh, that that you, if uh, reviewing the data, the data quality elements, because what we experienced is that. Um, if you if uh, we all have some legacy in, in in our in our portfolio, and if you try to build some digital capabilities on top of that legacy, you probably have to do some enabling things to correct processes, to correct data quality, to correct your systems, uh, and that's the difficult part in the, in the business case because you want to see benefits immediately, but there's a whole part of enabling things that need to happen on your existing portfolio of applications that you need to take into account. And therefore, I, I think I agree with Omar. It's if you go topic per topic, it's really difficult to justify it. But if you look at it from a bigger picture, um, then then there's a reason for success. But of course, you have to get the funding up front because it's also a belief. Sometimes we have to convince and to make people believe it, it can work, uh, even if the figures are still fluffy or you say it's, it's quite holistic. But then the, the, the way to do it is to have uh, intermediate updates and and to review your business case every time you come out with the with the, with the result. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying there, Dirk. Um, I, I think you're right on, and it's what Omar talked about as well, right? There's foundational things that need to happen. So whether it's with your network, whether it's with cybersecurity, whether it's with your data integration, um, those are foundational things that need to happen. And to your point, sometimes those are harder to justify because those are foundational pieces that help then enable what you want to do in the future with, with your transformation. So I, I really like the point that you made there. And I think if I looked at um, Philippe's uh, chat, you know, it's also what you said, Dirk, I, I looked at that and I was flagging on the word concrete. And I think he meant concrete, like, you know, it's a rock solid, it's got the right ROI. But I looked at it a little bit to say concrete, thinking that it doesn't change. And to your point, Dirk, I think it's important to go revisit that business case, revisit that plan as you're progressing on your journey, because um, that plan does need to change, it does need to shift. Um, and, and obviously, too, we're in a fast moving environment where technology is changing rapidly as well. And you want to be able to, to, to take advantage of, of any, anything you can as those changes are coming down. So I think well said, Dirk. Good. Well, we're coming towards the, the kind of end of the, uh, the round table timings, but I wanted to make sure that everyone had had chance to give their thoughts. Um, so please, again, if anybody wants to, to bring anything up, um, please feel free to kind of share video or, or put something in the chat box. Um, or I'm going to uh, just, just kind of pass it back and, and say, you know, has anybody got any closing comments? I mean, I, 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 what a great session this is and very positive and it's fantastic to see that people are, are recognizing um, the challenges, but the benefits and, and how to get around them. I think if you know, if I had to say, uh, throw it over the round table, it'd be like, you know, what what are you going to do next, uh, and, and is there any challenges to that? But 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 what will you do to get over them? I think it'd be quite interesting to get that feedback. I'm gonna go with Rick. Thank You've been you quiet for too long. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, uh, like I, I mentioned, um, for me, myself, as a, as a product manager, we, we deliver a service that's now supporting digital transformation more towards the accounting. Uh, so for me, most important is to, to get in front of the customer and our customers and, and get their feelings about what their needs are and see how we can implement that. Uh, I'm aware that may not be the case, the situation for, for everybody. So um, yeah, that, that's that's the most important for me. Just listen to the customer, understand their needs, know thy customer and so on, and, and then act on that. Uh, be creative and, and uh, find ways to, to have it done. Brilliant. Thank, yeah, that's a good very point. Much. So, yeah, that's a great point, Rick. I mean, I think, you know, anything you can anchor to for customer is great because it is a lot of times when we talk about this some of it is internal thinking so again thinking externally i'll just tell you really quickly from our own transformation within our own manufacturing 
obviously we were looking at productivity, uh, but one of the things that we were able to do is reduce our lead times. And our ability to reduce our lead times then really helped improve our customer service and get things to our customers uh, much quicker. So, um, you know, again, if you, if there's something that you can anchor on with your customer, that, that's gonna that's gonna be a, a big win for you. Thank you. Uh, for me, I would say if, you, if we talk digital transformation, I would say two small, uh, I would say sentence are more of the, the funny parts. Uh, I, I would say um, when you want to eat an elephant, you need two things. You need to keep it in pieces, but you have to keep in mind it's an elephant. <laughs> and the second thing is that digital transformation for me is first human transformation before technology, before anything. Francois, any, any last thoughts? No, I think it's in line with uh, the colleagues and also what Dirk mentioned. Uh, digitalization, the platforms are there and technologies are evolving very quickly. So we focus on that, it will be the wrong focus. You have to make sure that your company is evolving. Take that as a lean um, principle embedded in all the organization, not only with the ones dealing with technologies, but everywhere and uh, see that the organization is ready for that. The processes will be designed and will also evolve with the time that you will add more and more digital process into it. And that's uh, it's a key to success, that you are ready to transform and keeping transforming. Excellent. Omar, any, any final kind of comments? I mean, I think uh, two comments. One is it is all about people. So whether it's about the hearts and minds, whether it's about their alignment uh, around the goals, uh, whether it's about making sure the technology is designed for them, it's not for its own sake. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the opportunity is just enormous. When you look at the incredible array of new technologies that we're seeing today, from 5G network to augmented and virtual reality to AI and all its various flavors to cloud and edge computing. I mean, the potential of solving big problems has just never been bigger. And as long as we keep the people part in mind and, and use the technology to serve people, I think we'll be in great shape. Very good point. And, and Mick? Yeah, I mean, just to build off of what Omar said, because those are those are key key points that he brings up. I think it's also, you know, extending that when you think about the people, extending that innovation throughout the organization, because you don't know where that good idea is going to come from. And so, again, the technology is moving quickly, um, and but you want to be able to get that innovation throughout the organization because because your people are going to come up with some fantastic ideas and as long as they have the tools that that enable them to take advantage um, or the ways to innovate and to help bring new ideas forward um, it's really going to help accelerate because again there is a ton of potential like omar said um, and so the more people that you can help you can help empower to to help with that journey is going to be uh, very impactful for you right thank you i find also make how to to leverage it huh? Yeah. If, if I may, from my perspective, explain the why you want to do it. Explain it over and over again. The why you want, and what do you want to achieve? I think, and then you will get people on board. That's a great. It's a great place to finish on, Dirk. Hey <laughs> guys, I th thank you all very, very much for for your input. Um, I did say, you know, with some audience have been shy that this, this audience hasn't. So so it, it, it's what makes these sessions. I would encourage you all, you know, there's, there's already some people linking in with each other there. So please do continue the, the conversation and, and, and share with others. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank the um, to Nick um, for, for, for joining us on the moderator and, and Omar. Thanks very much for your input. But thank you all very much for your input because it's what's made it best on this. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions for anyone, please do reach out um, later or via LinkedIn. And um, I will thank you all once more and wish you a great rest of the day. Thanks all for joining. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Cheers, everyone. Bye.